All right, so Stormy is going back to who she was when she first came on the show. And Stormy, this fake ghetto mess, I don't like it. Is y'all ready to talk about it? Cue the music. Oh, yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. I drop a player like it's nothing, it ain't working out Now no debate or fuck discussion, bitch, I'm walking out I'm walking My out. time is money, I ain't loving, let you toss it out Flip my weave and walk it out, look how I just bossed it out Now come on baby, why you bugging, we can't talk it out I keep it moving, I ain't tripping, lost another spouse I'm just a boss, it's in my blood, no, I won't scream or shout Grabbing my keys what's up y'all it's your girl voodoo doll tv back with another review and this is love and marriage huntsville season six episode 27 i believe it is and um i'm just gonna do a quick recap over what's been going on this episode i do uh watch the show uh in the background but i chose not to review it anymore because a lot of the fans of certain people on the show gets really weird and i don't have time for that i'm not gonna have somebody drag me or or attempt to drag me uh because they don't think that they like what i said about a certain person that they don't even know it's weird the idolization of these celebrities and these reality tv celebrities is actually weird um and a lot of y'all claim to be christians yet if you say something unfavorable or you deem to be unfavorable about a human, not God, a human, here go to backlash. So, girl, y'all can have it. But I did want to get up here and uh, talk about Stormy. But before we get into Stormy, I watched the entire episode and the episode kind of... um. It was, it, it was, listen, this episode is trash. The whole show is really over. Like, at this part, the only real interesting couple that I like on this show is... um. Chris and Nell. And only because, number one, it's new. Number two, they actually have a really good storyline with the kids. And number three, they've been on this show as friends of, and we finally get to see them, and they actually have a story. Like, it's it's not the same old brow-beating divorce, the same old brow-beating cheating, the same old brow-beating my man, my man, my man is over here telling everybody on TV that I don't please him enough. Like, it's, it's it hit different. So shout out to them. I, I'm really interested into what they have to bring. And let me also say this. If I were Carlos King, I would kind of start phasing out of the same storylines that we've been dealing with since season one. And let's start getting some new people up in here. Start start putting a, a couple of new people up in here. Not necessarily your Stormy and your, your uh, what's this boy name? Her husband, her, 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 her carrier, her, um, her bellman. Um, it's not really necessarily them because it seems like they just, I don't, I don't, I don't even dislike her husband. I don't dislike Stormy, but I'll say this. I noticed Stormy is one way when she's not around her husband. And then when she around her husband, she bucks up. And it's almost like you putting your husband in a position to get, you know, in some real bad trouble. But we gonna get to that. And then, um, what's her name? The Whitlows, they already done gone. So it is what it is. But I think like a really another solid couple, like a real good, I know they got other couples in Huntsville that will probably fit in good with this group and bring something else other than Chris and Nell. You know what I'm saying? So I think that should be something that um, Carlos King looks at in the future because, you know, it's just getting tired and through. It's getting tired. We are, we are, I'm over it. I'm so over it. Anyway, but let's get into the episode. So really, um, I don't have the photos for all of that, so just bear with me. But the episode kind of opened up with, um, I believe it was uh, Kimmy telling Maurice that what's her name Tisha took a pregnancy test down there at the vaginal steam thing and then uh that was pointless then it went on to her even badgering him to get the doggone businesses up and running the buildings and all of that because he don't want to do no handiwork like he used to you know the same old stuff he feels like he a lawyer now he shouldn't have to she said you misrepresented yourself when I met you you act like you was a handyman and now you not and then also the libido thing girl listen your man seems like he have an addiction Kimmy and it seems like you just gonna lay there and do whatever it is he say because my man my man my man that's what it's giving and you know what upsets me about you Kimmy Kimmy you came on this show I thought you was so like smart and intelligent and I still think you do but I also know that I love the way you were poised or the way you are poised as it pertains to being around the other ladies you're a very smart and articulate woman but what bothers me the most about you Kimmy is when you get around Maurice you shrink yourself and dwindle yourself down so much to where it's like all of that that you are is it, it doesn't even exist anymore and I don't know if this this thing that you 
bought into with Maurice that, oh, he's the man and my man, my man, my man type of deal. Or, you know, I have to be submissive. I don't know if you bought into that Kevin Samuels BS that um, Maurice be on, but whatever it is, I don't like it. I, I mean, it's your life. If you like it, I love it. But I'll just say this. It, it, it goes to show that the most intelligent women always end up uh, being in the worst situations. And a lot of times it be running behind a man. And I don't understand. Well, I do understand it because I understand the psychology of black women and how we raised, you know, to where a man is one of the prizes of life. You know, a husband, you know, that's one of the prizes of life. But Kimmy, um, at this part, if you're going to continue to just be a, a, a punching bag, you know, and I don't mean literally, uh, but a punching bag for Maurice, then I, at this point, then don't have that same energy with the girls. Like you either going to be you or you not. And the fact that you can be one way with the girls and be able to articulate and be this and that and the third and be assertive when needed be. But yet when it comes to Maurice, you get the, oh, well, Maurice, well, I don't, I don't really understand. I mean, and he just be girl talking to you like you ain't even uh, got an ounce of intelligence. It's just like. That's, that that storyline is tired. Period. It him all of them are tired. But this storyline right here is tired, and it's it, to me it's not beneficial to the women watching it because they're gonna have women who think that that's how they supposed to be in order to be in a relationship with a man, and it's just not. So Kimmy, uh, again, I think you're very smart. I think you're beautiful. I think you're intelligent. I think you're articulate. One of the most, if not the most, articulate person on this cast. However, the way that you dumb yourself down for Maurice, it don't even matter. It kind of like crosses it out. Let Let's move on. So then we got Nell and Chris Fletcher. Chris Fletcher was telling her that he spoke to the son Junior, Chris Junior, and Chris Junior is dealing with some um, mental health issues at the moment, and she, how he told him to go speak to somebody. But Nell is really hardcore. Nell is just like, uh, anyways, he's just spoiled. Everything we do for him, you know, it's cool when he needs us, but when he got money, we don't hear from him. And da 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 da. Nell, you wonder why them children don't talk to you. You are not inviting as a parent. I don't care if you was the mama or the daddy. You are very like, um, you shut the kids down, you know, at first glance. And I'm, I'm not saying you don't have a right to be, but that's why I'm sure I don't want to talk to you. But I think it's refreshing that we got a new couple and a new family. Cause I'm more interested to see what's going on with that older daughter that y'all be acting like y'all don't deal with. You know what I'm saying? Cause she was spilling some teas, but shout out to Nell and Chris for that. Now, what else? Then we had Mel go meet up with the girls, with Tisha and Kimmy. Kimmy's trying to get them back on a good foot. Uh, they're able to be cordial and, you know, work on a, so, I guess, sort of relationship child. I don't know. But anyway, Kimmy uh, was upset because she didn't get invited to the name change ceremony and felt like, you know, I saw it on social media, girl, why I didn't get my invite. And she was like, well, I didn't want to make it a thing. And she was like, but you put it on social media, girl. So that was a whole thing. Kimmy, if you didn't want to go, then why are you so worried about getting an invite to this name change ceremony? Now, they also ends up bringing up the Black Expo and Mel felt like, hey, girl, talking to Tisha when I felt like it was my turn to speak you was kind of shutting me down and da, da 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 and Tisha was like it wasn't really like that I was listening to people but I understand Tisha's point of view too bitch I done, I'm the one put on the expo and not everybody want to critique me and tell me what I need to do no throw your own expo I get that I ain't gonna lie and it, rather it was constructive or not I wouldn't even went to the meeting Tisha and Marcel but y'all did I'm just saying girl go lay down at this point now the part that got me was uh Kimmy telling Mel about how your how the black stereotype is women have different last names than their kids and how she didn't want that with her and her son and Mel was like well technically right now you have different last names and Kimmy I think this is where the loss of communication came in because I think Kimmy's feeling like well we grown now well he's grown now so it really won't matter she, I think she meant as it pertains to school age children but ultimately girl you don't have to have the same last name of your mother and I understand where Kimmy was coming from when she was just like oh well you know the, the, the stereotype you know and it kind of lends the idea or lends to the idea of the single mother I think that's where Kimmy was coming from with that but Mel feels like girl I needed that for for me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think Mel was kind of defensive in her response. I don't think she was nasty or nothing, but she kind of was looking like in the sense of like, bitch, I, you know what I mean? Like, I, like, girl, I did that for me and me only. I don't need you questioning me. But it's the same thing amongst the group. Everybody questions everybody's stuff and gets in everybody's stuff. So um, now that we got that out the way, girl, I think, did I miss anybody? 
I don't think I missed anybody. It don't matter. Let's get into this content where I really want to talk about Stormy and her husband, her her carrier, her um, what do you call it? Her 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 bellman, Courtney. Get Stormy up here. Not Stormy. Stormy goes meet up with Tisha the first time because she's ready to move forward and she can bury the hatchet. Now, when she gets over there, she asks Tisha about everything, how everything going with the little smooth talk. And then she goes right into, well, hey, girl, did you know that I'm getting backlash behind the shipping labels and stuff? I'm getting people dragging me because your team messed up the shipping labels. Now, let me just say this. Um, the fact that Tisha could sit up there and look that girl straight in her face and be like, it ain't, it don't look bad on me. It really don't have nothing to do with me. It's pure asinine. Girl, when you own a company, everything good, bad, or indifferent falls on you. Period, point blank. It, I don't care who you paid, whoever you paid, even if you didn't proofread the instructions and everything and go over everything, you could have paid somebody else to do so, but you did it. So you dropped the ball. I know the person who did it, the one who literally dropped the ball, if that's true. But girl, you dropped the ball. Now on the flip side, I'm not apologizing to no goddamn Stormy. Stormy could kiss my ass. I'm not, uh, see, Stormy's very entitled. Oh, well, I feel like you should apologize. You don't think you owe me an apology? No, bitch. No. The fuck? And it wasn't even the fact that she felt like she needed an apology. It was the way she did it. Stormy got this nice, nasty way about her that I really don't like, you know? And she, she is nice, nasty when she not around Courtney. But when she get around Courtney, it's rah, 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 hood, hood, what's up, what's up? You know how she do. Girl, anyway. So she invites, uh, Tisha to, uh, double date. Her, Maurice, after she done called this man a bitch, I'm still confused as to how, um, what's her name? Tisha could even be in the same room with this girl. Girl, I wish, I wish she would have called my husband. Girl, uh, in front of me? I'm there? Even if he came back and told me, girl. But anyway, she invite them to a double date. So they're going to meet them out to go play pool. Let's get to it. Now it's time for the double date. First and foremost, uh, Tisha and, and Maurice is an hour and a half late. Very, very, very extremely disrespectful. Totally disrespectful. Um, I believe that that's the worst thing you could do to somebody is play with their time like that. It's one thing to be 15 minutes late. Hey, girl, I'm running a little behind 20 minutes. But an hour and a half, Courtney and Tisha, y'all, not Courtney and Tisha, girl. Courtney and um and Stormy, y'all better than me. There's no way I would have waited no hour and a half for no daggone Tisha and Marcel. But anyway, they comes in, and as you can see, this is the disposition, you know, because Courtney, not Courtney. Damn, why I keep calling her Courtney? Stormy is on. 10 stormy ready to roll stormy ready to roll she got it on her mind i don't know if it's because they was late or whatever it was but they come in and stormy already has it on her mind now this is where it, it to me it goes left stormy get to bringing up the fact that she called marceau a bitch um and no no marcia said you called me a bitch you know and she said well you said you was a bigger bitch you the biggest bitch and marcia was smart enough to be like girl i see where you're going you trying to get under my skin and then she said but i didn't appreciate you calling me mr and mrs Steele." and it, it didn't dawn on me till it dawned on me if if courtney is a i forget what his last name his court is, his last name starts with a b but stormy starts with a, or last name is Steele. i'm sorry what he was saying inadvertently was Courtney is the man of the relationship. She wears the pants. She the breadwinner. And I get that. Because that's the guy that is true. Courtney is a helper. He is. He's like one of Santa's little helpers. I don't care what none of y'all say. He is her husband. But yet and still, he's still a helper. That nigga ain't helped do a damn thing. Well, I ain't gonna say that. I ain't know they, I don't know their business. But I do know that you can tell the brains and the master behind all of that is Stormy. Not Courtney. Courtney just supports his wife. As he should. But that's where... um. What's his name? Maurice, Mar not Maurice. Marceau was coming from when he was saying like, yo, like, all right, Mr. and Mrs. Steele. But he ended up like, you know, I didn't mean it like that. And they felt like he did. But Stormy wants to continue to go in on it. So much so to where basically she told Marceau, I'm not going to call you a bitch no more since I know my boundaries. I'm sitting here saying as a woman, you know, no man wants to be called a bitch. 
You know how, you know the level of disrespect of calling a man a bitch, especially coming from a woman. Like, you know what you was doing, Courtney. And Courtney, that's where I don't like you at. Because you do that old passive aggressive ass shit and your husband just sat there and let you call him a bitch and he didn't say nothing. That's why I'm with Marceau when Marceau says, you know, if you addressing me as a woman, I'd rather address your husband. And she said, well, why you couldn't address me? I'm not, I'm, I'm a woman. Yeah, but you could have addressed me. Why would you want a man to address you? When he came and confronted you about the doggone money at the expo, you went home and told your husband and your husband told you no man should be addressing you. He need to be addressing another man. But in this situation, because you want to get a rise out of Marceau, you was over there hollering, well, you could address me. No, if your husband is present and allowing you to be disrespectful toward him, then he has every right to address your husband. And then furthermore, Tisha jumps in and was like, I thought we was done with this whole bitch conversation. Why are we still talking about it? But my question is, Tisha, why are you allowing it? Why haven't you responded? I ain't going to say how, but why haven't you responded? And then Stormy tells her, well, because y'all know what y'all be doing or something to the effect of that's why, um, what's her name? Kiki splashed that drink, that drink in your face. Cause y'all know what y'all be doing. Y'all be ignoring people. What? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Bad enough, you tried to get her to be back cool with Kiki when you went to go see her earlier, and she told you she's done with Kiki. Now, you, Stormy got mad at Tisha because Tisha says, I know my cousin, and her behavior is indicative of a person who's probably still using. She said, now, I can't say I seen it, but I know my cousin, and my cousin is probably still using. Stormy get her ass in a confessional. You don't know... Kiki from a hole in the wall and you're going to get up there and say, I don't think it's right to be accusing people of doing drugs. Well, she's an addict and Tisha know her better than you, but that's not in the here nor there. You want to say that it was okay for that girl to throw a drink in Tisha's face because she ignored her. Y'all, I don't know how Stormy, I ain't gonna lie, I thought Destiny was gonna mop her. I ain't gonna lie, I thought Destiny was gonna mop her because Stormy does too much. And Tisha, you allow this. Like, how, maybe you just have the patience of Joel, bitch. I don't know, because ain't no way I'd be sitting across from a bitch who called my husband no, no bitch. Period. Now, Tisha got in the confessional and was like, I'm realizing that, you know, Stormy don't really want to move forward. She just have an issue with me. Duh! Hello! How are you just figuring this out? She had an issue with every single thing you do. Duh, Tisha. See, that's why I be telling y'all, education don't make you smart. I don't understand how it took this long for her to figure this out. The girl called your husband a bitch. What are you talking about? What are we talking about here? I'm confused. Girl, it, it shouldn't have took you that long to figure this part out, Tisha. Get off of here. Now, as it pertains to Courtney allowing his wife to be very disrespectful, at the end of the day, Courtney, your wife gonna get you popped in the mouth. Or somebody going to pop her in her mouth. And you can tell she hasn't been popped in her mouth by the way she running around acting on this doggone episode or on this, uh, this, this, this network. Because you cannot go around totally disrespecting people. Now, I don't condone violence, but I believe sometimes it's necessary. And you cannot expect that people are going to be able to use their words every time you use yours. So you call that man a bitch. Your husband sat there and allowed it. If you ask me, he looked like a big ass teddy bear. Look like he won't hurt a fly. Look like he's softer than a box of Charmin tissue. If you ask me, you know what I'm saying? But ultimately, you want to sit up there and disrespect Marceau and I'm not helping up on Marceau I'm just calling it what it is you disrespected that man called him a bitch you disrespecting his wife and you you your mouth is off the chain and you act like nobody can't check you or tell you nothing and Marceau's being very nice about it because any other man would have turned up on your ass for calling him a bitch and then women would have been like oh he wrong for turning up no she's wrong for disrespecting him off the cuff period and when you went home and told your husband that you called him a bitch, oh no, my bad, he was there. When he saw that you called him a bitch, he should have pulled you aside and been like, bae, chill. Don't do that. Because as a man, he understands how bad that is for a woman or for anybody to call a grown ass man a bitch. Rather you feel like that or you think that, tell that, it, talk to that in pillow talking. You don't tell that to nobody face stormy, period. So now when Marceau wants to flip the switch or flip the script on your ass and basically be like, oh, I see what she doing. I'm about to kill her with kindness type of shit and, and kind of give it back to her. This is, uh, what's her name? Stormy. Now you got to go. Now you got to go. You do have to go off the show. Bye, Stormy. Stormy, 
it's so crazy because when you came on, you came on as Mel's friend who had the nice house and very successful black woman. And you still is that. But you have a problem. Now you can't talk. Now it's time to go. Oh, go ahead, Courtney. I got something important to take care of. Girl, I don't know. This show is tired, y'all. Throw the whole show away at this point. This, this show is tired. Throw the whole, go to a new city or something. Scrap these people and get all new people. Mel and Martel is divorced. Fine. Kimmy ain't gonna never stand up to Maurice. Fine. Tisha's gonna allow her husband to sleep with every woman in uh, Huntsville. Fine. What else is there to talk about now? Let it go. Mar uh, Carlos King, let it go, Fed. Let it go, Fed. Don't worry about it. It's over. Let it go. Either start with Chris and Nell and build some more people around them and let these other people be coming on as friends of the show or just scrap the whole show at this point. There's nothing else to say about that. Just scrap the whole show. It's done. It's over with. We tired of seeing the same old shit. We over it. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this crap, girl. Um, Stormy, you, 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 you trading on thin ice, Fed. And you need to tread light. Because so, another man ain't going to be as nice as Marceau. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, drop down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on all platforms. I'll see y'all who's later. Bye. Mr. Carroll. How you give the voodoo doll time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo doll is? The nigga you just had up here.